Welcome to another episode of the Meal Prep Monday podcast. I'm your host and founder of Prep Dish, Allison Shaw. Today we are talking about memoirs. Um, slightly off topic, but we'll get into it in a little bit. I thought it would be fun. I've just been kind of devouring memoirs over the past few months and thought it might be um, fun to just do one episode on the ones that I've read and takeaways, suggestions, that sort of thing. But before we get into today's topic, I have multiple announcements, things to talk about before we get into that. Um, So first of all, just in looking at the outlook for this podcast in 2024, I'm looking to change up the format slightly. So I'm still going to be doing the solo episodes mostly, but I am going to play around with bringing in some interviews. And I have a few different ideas for these interviews. So one that I'm really excited about involves potentially some of you out there listening to this episode. I would love to talk to some Preptish subscribers and hear how you are using Preptish in your life. Like, what does it look like? Are you making substitutions? Are you doing a grocery order and having it delivered? Are you going to the grocery store? Which grocery store? You know, when are you doing your meal prep? Is it Monday night? Is it Saturday afternoon? You know, are the kids helping? Um, You know, just really all those kind of details on what it looks like. I know a lot of times in these episodes, I will talk through, you know, how I'm currently using it in my household. But I, I know just from talking to a lot of you and our Facebook group and all of that, just you guys are using the meal plans in so many different ways. And even for me, I find it really inspirational just to hear how everyone is using the plans in real life and what that looks like. So if you feel like you might be open to sharing what that looks like in your household, I would love to talk to you. So I will put, um, it's info at preptish.com is the best email to reach out to. And I'll make sure that's in the show notes. If you are open to it, let's get in touch. Let's see. It would be, you know, probably setting up just like a 30 minute zoom call and chatting about what it looks like. So, you know, I just think that might be interesting for others to hear rather than just always hearing about what it looks like <laughs> for, for me, but seeing what it looks like for other people. Um, so there's that. I am looking to also do some expert interviews. So if you have any suggestions or someone that you'd really like to hear me talk to, or even a topic, I'm always open to feedback on that or even, you know, solo episodes if you have suggestions. So, you know, again, you can reach out to that info at preptish.com or um, on Instagram. And if you're in our Facebook group, that's a great place to just kind of um, put that out there. I may start a thread. Sometimes I'll start, you know, a conversation on Facebook of like, you know, do you have any ideas for topics? I probably will do a call out for anyone who is interested in potentially being interviewed. Um, And you don't have to have experience with being on a podcast or anything like that. I'm just looking for kind of what meal prep and meal planning looks like in your life. Um, So that is coming up. Um, The topic of books. So I know a year ago, I think it was 2022, I did kind of a few summaries of the book. um, It's B.J. Fogg, Tiny Habits, I think is the name of the book. Um, And anyway, I, I kind of did a series where I talked through, you know, it's a lot of theory on habits and habit change. And um, I'm currently reading the book Atomic Habits, which actually has some crossover content, but it's a really interesting book. I, it's It's been on my radar for years and I just had never picked it up. And I've been diving into that and I am planning to do a little mini series on some of my takeaways from that book. Um, but in doing that, I thought, well, you know, maybe I have also been reading all of these memoirs. So maybe you guys would like to hear you know, I'm not going to do a whole series on them. I'm going to just talk about all the different ones in one episode. That way, if you're looking for some inspiration on something to pick up, I will, you know, hopefully this episode can help inspire a new reading selection. And then one other quick announcement is I know I've talked about in the past, I don't remember the last time I've actually mentioned it on this podcast, but I have another project called Miscarriage Hope Desk. That project has recently transitioned into being a nonprofit. So that is now a 
um, 501c3 nonprofit. And October is Miscarriage Awareness Month. It's actually Pregnancy Loss and Miscarriage Awareness Month. So I always feel like it's an appropriate time to just mention to all of the listeners here, if that's something that has impacted you or you know someone who is impacted um, by miscarriage or pregnancy loss, I would just appreciate you, you know, sending them to that resource. Um, and we are doing, you know, some different, you know, just a lot more awareness and resources throughout the month of October, as well as some um, fundraising projects. So, you know, miscarriagehopedesk.org is the best place to check that out. But they also, you know, we're on Instagram, there's a podcast, all of those things as well. Um, but just like to kind of throw that out here because I know sometimes there is unfortunately some crossover between the two audiences. Okay, I think that's it for announcements for today. And yeah, I'm excited to talk about memoirs. So first of all, all but one of these, I think I did on um, an audio version. So I don't know how you consume your content when it comes to books. I am still uh, like, I like a hardback, you know, paper book <laughs> that I can hold and read. And I love reading real books. I don't do the Kindle thing. I know I should, especially, you know, with traveling, I always have like <laughs> at least one or two like real books that I lug along, but I like that and I like to read. So I do it. And, um, but I also will do audio books mainly through Audible, but I also wanted to give a quick shout out to looking up. So where I'm located, it's called Libby, but my local library actually does audio versions of books. It's a little harder to find all of the books that I'm looking for, but um, one of the books I'm going to talk about today was checked out through um, the local library. So that um, definitely helps, you know, budget wise to find some there. So I usually try and look there first. Actually, I think two of the books, now that I'm looking at them, two of them might have been through Libby. So, and then a few of them were through Audible. Okay. So the books I'm going to talk about today, I think they're all memoirs, except for one is technically a biography because it was not written by, so what Elizabeth Taylor, and that was not written by her. That was, you know, written by someone else. So the, there's one, two, maybe seven of them listed here. So one of them is Matthew McConaughey's. The other is Elizabeth Taylor, Jewel, Matthew Perry, Demi Moore. And then the last one's kind of a fun one, Michael Edman, um, who is my neighbor and wrote a book. So I'm just going to go through very briefly each of them and my little takeaways and um, who I would recommend it for. And really, I will say all of these are just excellent reads in their own right, um, depending on what you are looking for. So uh, Matthew McConaughey, Green Lights. This one, I actually do recommend doing in the audio version because it's read by him and it's he makes it really entertaining. Like, I don't think I would have enjoyed it as much had it not been read by him. You know, it's to me, this one was more entertainment than getting a bunch of really deep, meaningful takeaways, but I still recommend it. It was one, sometimes I will at night before I go to bed, kind of lay in bed and listen to something. And this is one that I did that with. And it was a really good one to, not that it necessarily puts you to sleep, but it was just kind of a good nighttime one and, um, you know, not too heavy or anything like that, but really interesting. And then, um, you know, he is in Austin area now. So it's kind of fun to hear some of those references as well. Um, but definitely entertaining and it has to be audio. <laughs> like I really think that one has to be audio. Um, the next one, Elizabeth Taylor, this was the most recent one I did. This one was written by someone else. So the writing style was because it wasn't written by her. I think, you know, it was a little less entertaining and at times, I don't want to say dry, but it, it felt like it maybe it was a little longer than it needed to be. But overall, it was just fascinating. <laughs> I did not know a lot about Elizabeth Taylor, to be honest. It was not really from, you know, my my time in growing up. So a lot of the references made were people that maybe I recognized the name, but didn't really know who they were. I didn't, you know, I'd heard of the movies, but maybe not seen them. But she just has an incredible life story. 
and um, just so fascinating. And I found I just wanted to like keep coming back to it. And um, I think it was several, it was a longer one, like kind of 15, 16 hours. And it was really hard to kind of stop and pick back up because I really wanted to just keep um, going. There were, you know, there were a few chapters that were a little like I said, on the drier side, but overall, just like such an incredible story. And, you know, I think a lot of these, it's just interesting to read about other people and their struggles and realizing, you know, no one's life is perfect. Everyone has their, uh, you know, struggles and their demons. And, um, you know, but Elizabeth Taylor's, it wasn't just that. It's also the fascination with how extravagant she lived life and her perspective on life and and all of that. So that is one. And it was called The Grit and Glamour of an Icon. Um, The next one was Jewels, Never Broken Songs or Half of the Story. And this, out of all of them, I think this one was the top one for me. I'm also a Jewel fan. I'm a huge fan of her music. Um, But hearing her story, everything she went through, Um, you know, and I think you maybe, you know, for me, like I didn't know much of her story. I knew she was from Alaska. I knew I'd heard, you know, she'd lived in her car. Like that's kind of all I'd heard of her story. Um, but when you hear more of it, it is just so incredible what she went through and really inspiring and all the way even to the end, you know, her origin story and hearing how she grew up was so interesting, but then also hearing present day, like her, you know, in her (laughs) introduction into motherhood and all of that piece of it was also, you know, it's like the whole thing, I think from beginning to end, I was just, um, could not stop. I want to say couldn't put it down, but could not stop listening. This one was really great. And the audio on this one. So all of them, except for Elizabeth Taylor, were read by the author. So, you know, I think the audible versions are worth doing for a lot of these for that reason. And the cool thing with Jules is there were, anytime there was like a song referenced, she would actually sing pieces of it. So, and, you know, her voice is just so beautiful. So I really liked um, that one for that reason. This one was probably, like I said, my top pick and just so much I didn't know to her story. And she was just crazy, the, the things that she had to overcome. Um, the next one is Matthew Perry, Friends, Lovers, and the Big Terrible Thing. This one, um, gosh, I like I said, I'm going to recommend them all. I would be prepared. It is really dark, and it's really hard. There were parts that were really hard to read. He's had a lot of struggles with addiction, and so it's there were... I want to say parts, but really the entire thing was difficult to read, you know, but, you know, I still found myself kind of fascinated by it, especially being, you know, growing up watching Friends, um, then getting to hear all of this behind the scenes of like what was actually going on in his personal life was just really fascinating. Okay. And then the next one, Demi Moore's Inside Out. So this is where I think Audible kind of started (laughs) to like catch on, like, you know, Audible kind of starts to understand you just like the algorithm or whatever, because I think I did Matthew Perry and then I did Demi Moore. And it's interesting because they reference some of the same people. They were kind of in Hollywood around the same time period. So there's a little bit of like strange overlap between these two. Uh, And hers also, um, the thing with hers that I wished I had had more of was and I get it. And this was even with Jules. Like, I think there were parts where I really wanted more details. And Demi's for sure, I I feel like there was so much more she could have talked about. And I think she probably did that for valid reasons, like out of respect for, you know, either her family, her friends, the people that were involved um, of not, you know, name dropping or mentioning the details of certain situations. But I do feel like there was quite a bit that was left out of Demi Moore's that could have been included. But you know, still really interesting just to hear what she overcame as well in her childhood and then, you know, just starting out and um, a lot. But I do feel like there were there were some gaps that were a little hard for me to fill in with hers. But she, you know, also was read by the author. So it was um, overall would recommend it. But again, my top choice out of all of these listed would probably be the the jewel one. 
Um, and then the last one was just kind of a fun little bonus one I wanted to add in. Probably no one's heard, but so the name's Michael Inman. And I looked, the book actually is not available on Amazon, but the Kindle version is. There's not an audio version, but this is my neighbor and it's called The Happy Texan. He was a truck driver for years for bands and would drive around the country, you know, helping with the the, the touring equipment. And his stories are so fun and funny and just hearing his perspective too. Like he really, he loved what he did. It was so passionate about it. There were just so many fun little um, serendipitous moments. And like I said, just hearing, you know, how he really found his calling in life um, and going and attending all of these concerts. And he was really into you know, the people that he toured with. And a lot of the bands are people that you would recognize their names. And again, there was less of the storytelling of what kind of was going on with the shows and, you know, throwing famous people under the bus. There wasn't as much of that. It was more just his kind of personal perspective, but I enjoyed reading that. And I think it's also, to me, this one was one that just forced me to remember, you know, we're living in these little communities and you just never know the full story of, you know, your neighbors or the person you see at the grocery store. And you just, you know, you kind of get these like quick um, moments with someone and, you know, it's just such a small moment of like what their life has really involved and, and who they are as a person. And um, so it's really fun to, to hear more of that. So those are the books that I have been reading slash listening to over the past few months. Um, I will, I'll put them in the show notes, but most of them are going to be pretty easy to, to find. I think there's a few like dual has a few ones and this is the only one I've read Elizabeth Taylor. I think there's a few, she actually wrote a book or two and I may dive into those next. So I'll try and make sure I link like the exact one, which I read. Um, but those are, those are there and that's all I have for today. Um, I hope you enjoyed this little sidetrack look at some book recommendations. Like I said, I'm hoping to get into some Atomic Habit reviews. I haven't decided yet. I may save that for sort of a January time frame talking about habits, but I may also, I don't know, do that for December, you know, kind of in preparation for the new year. I haven't, haven't quite figured out the, the order of some of the episodes, um, but reminder, if you are interested in talking with me, being on the show, I would love to have you. Um, just reach out at that email address, info at prepdish.com. And a final reminder that if you never have tried PrepDish and you're like, well, what are you talking about? This is um, our time-saving meal prep meal plans. We provide a grocery list and recipes, instructions for prepping meals ahead of time. We are saving you time. You don't have to think about the meals. We do all the planning for you. You can go to prepdish.com slash MPM. That's short for Meal Prep Monday. If you have not tried us out, that's a great way to get a two-week free trial. You can check out all the different plans. We've got super fast, gluten-free, paleo, um, low carbs. So you can see what is the best fit for you, but that's really just the best way to try it out. See if it's a good fit. If not, you can you know, cancel and um, at least you've tried it out. So again, that's prepdish.com slash MPM. Okay. That is all I have for this week. I will be back again next Monday with another episode.